Good morning from Rhodes. It's a beautiful summer morning and a hot day ahead. First, I have a little painting project. Oh yeah, and my name is Lena. Maalipurkkia auki. Tässä tulee siis tosi hyvää kuvaa. Kiitos, kun sä tönit mua. Ja sä tuut ihan muun kiinni. Vella on ainoa hyvä kuvattava. Ei tässä tuu mitään. Mene muualle. Sä oot liian lähellä. On se komea luu. Se on komea, komea luu. Aha, no niin. First, we drive through quote-unquote our village, Soroni. Soroni got its name from the numerous beech trees that used to grow in the area. This is a small village that lives its own life at its own pace, and you rarely see a tourist here. There are about 1,500 inhabitants in Soroni, most of whom work in the agricultural sector. Soroni is known for its good olive oil. A lot of grapes, lemons and oranges are also grown here. In the supermarkets, you can find fruits and vegetables produced in the area. Soroni is an absolutely wonderful place to live. The people here are really nice, warm, friendly, social, natural country people, and everyone knows each other. Soroni is like one big family. Most of the shops are located here along the main road. Locals can find almost all the stores and services they need here. Only in rare cases do you have to go outside the village. As a fun detail, I would like to mention the village's postal service. Every time the mailman comes here, he calls those who have received the package to come and pick it up. And this man happens to speak fluent Finnish. In general, the locals here may not know how to speak English. Here you can see the main power plant of Rhodes Island.
Then we drive through the town of Paradisi, which has about 3,000 inhabitants. Paradisi, which means paradise, got its name from the earlier luxurious gardens, which had exotic flowers brought by the Arabs. Today the name is said to describe the beautiful surrounding area. It is good to drive carefully in Paradisi, as the main road is quite narrow and there is a lot of traffic, including buses, trucks, pedestrians, motorbikes. Next we drive past the Agoras, the International Airport of Rhodes, which is right next to Paradisi, about 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles from the center. The airport is dedicated to the ancient boxer and Olympic champion, the Agoras of Rhodes. The airport began operation in 1977. Since then, it has been expanded in stages, most recently 2005. The length of the airport's runway is approximately 3.3 kilometers or 2 miles. The airport is one of the busiest in Greece. In 2013, it was recorded that around 2 million passengers used the airport. Then we come to Kremastis new bridge, which was built all last winter and the roads were closed for months. Fortunately, there is now a logical roundabout. Previously, the upper bridge was one way and the crossing impractical. I think that your brother doesn't like these roads. I love me. I love oh, that. because I have... I do. Now we go up the mountain and the road sign can be seen on the right, so we are officially in the center of roads. Milu can be seen here at the top right. Let's just go around to the other side and look for a parking space. Milu is a playground for children and a cafe for adults, where you can also get salty snacks and sweet treats. Parents can relax in peace while the staff looks after the little ones. There are many programs for children in Milu, and many people like to organize their children's birthday parties here. Today we're leaving from Milu early because everyone is hungry. Now we'll head to Grandpa's home, which is not far from here. The food is almost ready there. Wow, shade. <laughs> no matter how small the balcony or porch is, Greeks tend to fill the railings, balcony floors, outside stairs, and even the street sides with plants. 
Grandpa has planted a lot of plants, flowers, herbs, and trees around the small yard. I enter the kitchen through the side door. Leo is playing on his phone. There is no drying cabinet in the Greek kitchen. The dishes are placed to dry on the counter in a plastic rack and the water drains onto the plastic tray or into the sink. There is always a window above the sink. Greeks are orthodox in religion and it can be seen, among other things, in the presence of icons. The word icon comes from the Greek word ikon, which means image. The icons represent Christ, the Virgin Mary, angels, holy people and events. It's customary to burn a small flame, candle or oil lamp in front of the icons. Family photos from weddings and christenings are nicely arranged on the table. And above them hangs an eye, or mati. You can't help but come across this symbol in Greece. You can see them in people's homes, shops, and for example, in cars. The blue eye is a protective amulet against the evil eye. They are produced in many forms, such as decorations, jewelry, keyrings, and magnets. It is believed that the evil eye is caused by envy of another person or his property. The living room is always clean and the porcelain on the shelves beautifully decorates the back wall. Then we all sit down to eat in a very relaxed atmosphere and the TV is always on at the end of the dining table. Today's meal is traditional Greek home cooking, lemon baked chicken, potatoes and a Greek salad. Food is always prepared in large quantities. Great aunt is constantly cooking and easily feeds 10 people a day. My husband Yanis has three brothers and there are five grandchildren in total. We are the only ones who live further away from my husband's parents. The rest of the family lives in the center of roads. In Greece, family is the most important thing. The family community is tight. Grandparents take care of their grandchildren. Unemployed and sick relatives are taken care of among the family. And of course also the elderly. After getting married, adult children often move to the other spouse's parents' house, for example, to an apartment built on the second floor or to a new separate house built on the same plot. If adult children live on their own, then as close as possible to their parents. This applies to the whole family. Relatives tend to visit often and bring edible gifts with them. Leo. The cousins play for a while and then it's time for us to go home. We drive through the center of roads, which is slightly inland on top of the mountains. This is where the locals live. Tourism and hotels are concentrated around the center, closer to the beach. We are driving down the mountain and start to come across luxurious five-star seaside hotels. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yasas.